Alrighty, three hacks that are gonna help you learn scooter tricks faster, dude. So follow these three hacks and it'll help you learn things faster because you guys are all about speed. You wanna be able to progress fast, so I'm gonna help you with that. First and foremost, so smash that thumbs up button, guys. Let's get this video to 100 likes. Go cop some merch, dude. Today we're rocking the signature singlet, man. It's awesome, I love it. It's a great fit, looks awesome. So link in the description if you feel like copping some merch to support the channel, and let's get into the video. All right, to kick things off, I'm just gonna quickly try a double bry flip on the resi. For an example right now, it's like 6.30 in the morning. We're gonna try double bry real quick. Well, that didn't work and there's a reason why that didn't work. It definitely didn't work, did it? Now, I'm gonna tell you why that didn't work. There's two reasons and two little hacks here. Okay, the first hack or tip for you guys is to stay within your skill range. I can't do two bry flips. I have never been able to because I naturally bry to my left side. Okay, so if I wanted to do a double bry, I would have to do it to my left side and land opposite, which I can't do either. It's out of my school range. I haven't put time and effort into learning that, and I haven't learned the prerequisites to be able to do a double bry. Also, I didn't warm up, okay? So, two hacks here. Warm up, 100%, make sure your body's warm. Start off basic. As soon as you're warm, go hard, okay? You can start as soon, so my principle is warm up, then do the hardest stuff first when trying to learn. So the hardest tricks I'm trying to learn first, get that out of the way and it works really well. Have to stay within your skill range, okay? You can't just jump in to tricks that you cannot do. We need to have the prerequisites down, whether that's the fundamentals of scootering like I've talked about, or if you're at an intermediate stage, the tricks beforehand or some tricks that are mixed in there. Like let's say you wanna do a bry whip bar, okay? And you can't whip bar properly. Go learn the whip bar first and the bri whip bar will come super quickly. Even if you're really efficient at a bri whip, but you can't whip bar, it ain't gonna work. So you need to take the right steps to be able to do that, right? So if you wanna progress faster, stay within your skill range. You should have a list of tricks that you can and can't do and make sure it's all mapped out and then fill in the pieces. Like I just said with the bri whip bar example, it's a perfect example. If you've got a bri whip bar on your trick list, but you're not good at whip bars, spend a day or two on that and come back to the bri whip bar and you will get it so damn quickly. All right, so it's just little things like that. If you're a beginner and you're trying to learn a tail whip, but you can't no footer, definitely learn the no footer first. It's gonna help you split your legs apart and therefore when you go into the tail, you're gonna have a better understanding and you're gonna learn it a lot quicker instead of just hammering away at the tail whip without having the trick before it or the trick that comes after it or next to it or anything like that. You need to stay within your skill range. The reason why it's so damn important to stay within your skill range and if you use this hack, that is not really a hack, it's more like common sense, but a lot of people don't do it because they're too eager to get better faster. And that's the point of this video. We wanna get better faster, but sometimes if you put a little bit of time into the boring stuff first, the harder stuff becomes easier, therefore you're saving time. So it is still a hack. Common sense, but a hack. The other reason and the most important reason as well is for injury prevention. If you break an ankle, guys, doing something stupid, it's gonna set you back months. I've broken my ankle five times pretty much in my scootering career, broken arms, everything, because I was trying stupid stuff. It happens by accident as well, but if you take things cautiously and you build your foundation, you can prevent injury a lot better, which therefore saves you time, all right? All right, let's move into hack number two, dude. And to demonstrate this, we're gonna be using this little quarter here. It's about three foot. Let's try do a bry butter on it. Nope, definitely not. That ain't happening. So as you see, I just tried to bry butter that three foot quarter. Now, I think that was a pretty stupid idea at my current skill level. So I wasn't at the skill level for hack number one, but I also chose the wrong ramp, right? I chose the wrong ramp. You guys need to get better at picking what ramp you do tricks on. At a certain stage in your scootering career, you're gonna be able to do most of your tricks on any ramp, and that's the goal, to be able to transfer your tricks from one ramp to another, no matter the size, right? And that comes with skill and time. But if you wanna learn tricks faster, we need to pick our quarters wisely. So I'm gonna go over a couple of quarters in the skate park and give a couple of examples of tricks that you should and shouldn't do on that size quarter and what size quarters are good for certain tricks and how to learn them and if we should do it with coping or without coping. I think this is a really good hack and it's gonna help you guys progress really fast if you know what kind of quarters to use as well. Now, some of you guys are gonna have uh, like 
you know, outdoor skate parks with very limited quarters. Sometimes you might have to travel to a different skate park. We did when we were kids. We used to come to Ramp Fest when we were younger because they just had certain quarters that we could do certain stuff on that our outdoor parks didn't have or we'd travel to a different outdoor skate park that had a spine that we could use so we could get the clip that we wanted and get the trick that we wanted but we had to go to that location for that certain ramp and that's the beauty of skate parks guys. So let's take a look around this skate park and give a few examples of what I'm talking about here dude. Okay we're gonna start with uh, fly out. This is a really good thing because most kids and people at outdoor skate parks don't have box jumps so we're gonna start with fly out. So what makes a good fly out quarter and what what kind of things should you be looking for to identify if one fly out is better than another fly out? So let's say you're at a skate park, there's five fly outs. They're all a little bit different, of different sizes, different kind of shapes and verts and all that kind of stuff. What identifies a good one? So let's go over that. So I'm gonna use the example at Rampfest just here. This is one of the fly outs that we use, okay? So this is a seven foot quarter, dropping into a five foot quarter with a coping bar. Now. Do you guys think that I teach kids fly out tricks here first? Absolutely not. This is not what I use first. This, it's a good size, everything's a great size, but there's one thing about this quarter that makes it very difficult than another quarter in this place. That's your coping bar, okay. This ramp is a little bit steep as well, but it's got a coping bar, which is gonna make uh, fly out tricks a little bit harder. So let's go to an example of a good one, then we'll come back around and tell you when you should use this one. We're at the resi box right now. This is a perfect fly out quarter. Let's disregard the resi for a second. Let's just say this was wood, okay? This, absolutely perfect. We've got a five foot up ramp. We have no coping and it is not too steep where you can actually come out and land on top nice and safely. Perfect fly out quarter. You guys aren't gonna have this at your skate park, but just for the argument's sake, cause we're at ramp fest, perfect. Five foot high, no coping. Decent platform to land on, excellent. Right, let's look at something like this. This is a little bit smaller than the resi box. We'll call this a four foot. It's a little bit mellower and it has no run up, but let's envision that there is a run up. There is a quarter. So we could drop into the spine and come up this. This one here is a perfect fly out ramp. It's actually an amazing fly out ramp, but at Ramp Fest, there's no speed for it. So you can't get any speed. But if this was at a local skate park, four foot high, no coping, perfect fly out, lots of space here to land. Amazing. So the two quarters like the resi box and the quarter that I just showed you, perfect for fly out tricks like learning your tail whips, uh, bar spins, anything. And the reason why this is gonna help you be able to learn it faster, taking away the coping bar, is you don't have to worry about that little bump. You don't have to worry about where you jump. You can just fly out of the ramp naturally and flick your trick. Coping on the other hand, bumps you around a little bit. Now, after I learn all my fly out tricks on this, I will then take it to coping as well. I'm not saying you can't learn on coping, but if you want to go faster, try find a ramp that doesn't have coping, okay? That's just for a fly out example. But there's lots of different ramps as well. There's one more ramp that you might have at your skate park that I'm gonna show you, um, and you should definitely try learn fly out tricks on this. It's gonna make it so much faster. Okay, that's the roller. Here is a roller. These are amazing. This one, not so good because it's on top of a box, but the ramp itself, no coping, no lip, but you can still get air out of it. And a lot of skate parks have these on like little hips or, you know, they're not quite banks. They just got a little bit of a transition. Absolutely perfect for your fly out tricks as well. So if you're learning fly out, stay away from the coping, pick one of these, a four foot like that, or a big five foot like that, if you've got one. Okay, let's move on to a couple of air quarters. Ramp S is a perfect example um, and has really good ramps here for airing. They got some really bad ones and some really good ones. So first of all, I'm gonna show you the most perfect ramp. This is actually probably the best ramp that I've ever been on personally um, to do air tricks on. And you can learn any air trick on this ramp, any air trick, all right? That is this bad boy here. This is a six foot with coping, mallowed out a little bit. The transition's not too steep. It is absolutely perfect. If you have a quarter like this at your skate park, you can learn overheads, whips, bars, flares, whatever, whatever you need. This will cover pretty much any trick. Double flares, 540 flares, it can go all the way up. You can air super high on it without casing and you can come down nice and safely into some good transition. So that's an ideal perfect quarter right there. I just wanted to show you what a perfect quarter is. So we'll say six foot with a coping bar that doesn't stick out too much. Excellent. I'll show you another one. This is for people that don't like coping, okay? This is a five foot ramp, same up ramp as our fly out here, but 
it's on the back of the spine. This is perfect, and a lot of people use ramps like this to do their first flare, to do their first bry flip, to do anything like that, because they don't like the coping just yet. Once you get good at doing it on this one, you transfer to that one, and you can go higher. So five foot high, no coping, really good to learn tricks under coping so this ramp is not designed for you to go over the top of it it's designed for you to stay inside of the quarter pipe okay so whenever you're using a five foot quarter like this stay inside you're going to learn tricks much faster then when you're ready to go over coping take it to another five foot with coping or a six foot even better and you can start to go over coping i'm going to give one more example of what a good quarter pipe to learn air tricks on and this one here is for beginners okay so we're inside of a bowl here okay so this is a five foot quarter same size as the spine but with coping so you can learn to bry on this learn all your tricks on this just the same but the reason that i wanted to take you in here is because you see all the distance and space that we have let's say you've just learned to tail whip fly out and you want to learn a tail whip air but all your quarter pipes are too narrow if you have a bowl at your skate park go down here and you can use, in one of my other videos, how to air over coping, I was talking about the point A and point B method. You can use that for your whip airs because you've got so much space. You can use any of this just here and you start at point A and you land at point B well under coping and you can learn how to do your whip airs. So for beginners and stuff, bowl is absolutely perfect. Now, certain tricks need certain quarters. Most tricks can be done on most quarters over five foot. Very experienced guys can do really, really good tricks on four foots with coping or without, but let's just talk about you intermediates and beginners for a second. If you're an intermediate, for example, and you're trying to learn your first double overhead, I would suggest using a six foot quarter with coping, okay? That's just an example. Let's say some of you guys wanna do your first double overhead. Go to a six foot, with a bit of coping, you'll have that, okay? That's that's probably about as big as you need. You can go to seven, you can go higher. Any lower, you're gonna struggle a little bit unless you're really efficient with the motion, but just learning, I'd stick to a six foot. I think six and six and a half foot with coping is the most ideal quarter. When you get into really big stuff, you can move into a seven foot with coping and they're freaking amazing as well. I'm gonna give a bonus little tip here that will actually slow down your progression if you do this. Try avoid using vert quarters like this. This is a 10 foot vert to do your tricks. A lot of kids I see come in here to try a bry flip on it because they can go right to the top and then right to flat. You may get your bry flip in here, right? You may be able to do it. But when you transfer it over to a five foot like that one, it's gonna become very difficult. So start with the five foot and work upwards. Don't work downwards, okay? Alrighty guys, the last hack here is commitment mindset. Okay, so. This is gonna to happen to a lot of you guys if you made it this far in the video. I know it's a boring one. I just wanted to unload all this information on you because I freaking love teaching this stuff. So, commitment mindset. A lot of you guys are gonna resonate with this right now. How many of you guys out there land one foot over and over and over and over and over and you just can't get your two feet together? You need to start going in with a commitment mindset and I'll tell you why. I'm gonna tell you the pros of a commitment mindset, okay? If you commit to a trick that you can do, let's say, let's say Briar, I love using the Briar for example, and you keep getting one foot, one foot, one foot, you have way more chance of actually stacking going to one foot than you do going to two, believe it or not. Committing is actually safer, providing you're getting close to the trick. Don't fully go up to a trick you've never done and commit to it, right? You're gonna get some heel bruise, maybe roll an ankle, something like that. If you've done the trick three times on a quarter, let's say a Briar like this one, and you'll land in one foot, dude, freaking stomp it. Just put your feet together. The worst that's gonna happen on any overhead, on any trick, like let's say we'll say overheads, whips, oh, what else? Maybe even a flare, dude. We'll even use a flare. The worst that happens to you when you commit is either you land like this with your feet next to the scooter, cop a little bit of heel bruise, or you actually land on the scooter, leaning backwards and landing on your bum a little bit. That ain't so bad, trust me. Get yourself some butt pads, dude. And the quicker you learn to commit to tricks, I know riders, right, that can commit within three goes. They learn a trick like that. And there's other riders that take an hour to get their trick, even though they've landed at one foot a hundred times, it takes them 101 tries to get it. If they had committed to 59 of those, they would have landed it 59 times in a row, but they don't because they don't have a commitment mindset. You can't be afraid to crash when committing. It is safer, I promise you. Give it a try, start committing, start snapping your feet together, start catching it and committing and watch. Worst that'll happen, land on your ass or you'll loop out, all right? You got this.